guys this is Irene okay so this is gonna be just kind of a big general recap on just a few things that I saw when I was kind of researching just to see what was going on with Trump and Kavanaugh uh, earlier uh, a few weeks ago I reported on the trade agreement the Mexico side of it um, the Canada side hadn't been worked out yet our president has still worked out that side um, if you hear some noise I actually have my girls uh, doing the kitchen. Um, they were supposed to do it last night and they didn't. So I apologize for the noise. Anyway, um, so the Canada side of the agreement has been worked out. This agreement is superior to NAFTA in every way. And what I was really disappointed in is that on MSNBC, uh, I, I, I'm telling you, I promise you that these people are um, not pro-American. And I'll tell you why. Our president worked out an agreement that was advantageous to us. Canada gave up um, some of their potential profits for their dairy industry to the United States. This was something that I know Canadian uh, dairy farmers were really hoping wouldn't happen. I know that was like a very um, big concern for them. But nevertheless, our president was able to negotiate, you know, getting the United States in a little bit on that which is good because we actually have a surplus of milk that we cannot sell uh, we use this milk a lot to um, in dairy subsidizing a lot to fund programs like WIC uh, women infants and children stuff like that anyway MSNBC couldn't give credit where credit was due um, they actually said and this goes back to me saying that they're anti-american that our president bullied um, the Canadian Prime Minister into the agreement and that um, they wouldn't be surprised if he held some sort of animosity toward our president based on the negotiation. You know, that is crazy to me. It's crazy that our president works out a deal that's good for America and that they would go on and try to start beef between their leader and our leader on national TV. Um, th this makes me feel like, and I've said this before, they're really about destroying our country because that's not what you do. You know, we want to have good relations with Canada. Why would you go and basically taunt that man like, ooh, our president bullied you, you know, into making an agreement that's bad for you guys? Why would you go on national TV and do that unless you were trying to disrupt and destroy America? And so, yeah, I'm not I'm I'm, I'm not really feeling them on that. But kudos to our president. He said he was going to throw NAFTA out and work out something better. He did. This will definitely go through. Uh, without any issue because only a stupid person would not be in favor of the agreement he set in place. It's superior to the agreement we had. Of course, the media can't give him any credit. Um, they can just call him a bully. I think everybody's so effeminate these days that, you know, the minute somebody negotiates hard and in America's favor, people are literally confused and they don't like it. Um, that's really too bad. But since I love our country and I think our president's doing a good job, I'm just going to say that I'm not too bothered by this. Um, moving on to the next subject. I want to touch on some Kavanaugh stuff. You know, I wish that Kavanaugh wasn't such a big deal, but it sort of is. There are just a few things I wanted to point out because I don't know if you guys caught it. I want to start with the two women that basically were violent um, in the elevator. And, and I will say that this was a form of like bullying that they did. It was interesting because then again, good old MSNBC. Um, spoke about the bullying tactics of um, the Republicans. And I'm not a Republican. Everybody knows that I am very conservative leaning, but I'm not a Republican. So I'm not defending Republicans because I'm a Republican. I'm, I'm about to defend them because I see a double standard here. So they're saying that bullying tactics are being used by the Republicans. What do you call forcing a door open, not allowing a person to leave and screaming at the top of your lungs at them, if not bullying? So I want to draw your attention and I'm not going to throw in clips y'all because I just have a lot of videos coming out and I don't want to edit too much stuff, but not the first woman with an accent, the second woman, okay? The second woman who was screaming at him, if you listen to the clip, and I advise you listen to the clip on Democracy Now! because they play the full audio, the very last thing she says is that, and this person's going to tell us what to do with our bodies. Right there. This is what this is all about. 
And that's what it's all about. All the screaming and, and hollering about the sexual abuse that they may or may not have suffered. That's not why they stopped that man in the elevator. They're upset because they know that he may not be able to overturn Roe versus Wade, but he very well may pick it apart until they can't kill their babies. And so after all that screaming about sexual violence, her end sentence was about Roe versus Wade and being told what to do with her body. And so you just have to see through these shenanigans. And I just don't like that, you know, they're saying Republicans are being bullies when, like I said, you know, forcing somebody, screaming at them, demanding that they talk to you, holding the door open, what is he gonna do? Like, I personally probably would have pushed her out the way. Like me personally, would have reached that point where I would have tried to get out of the elevator, not that he really could because so many people were blocking it. Or I would have not knocked her over, but I definitely would have placed my hand on her and moved her out the way. And I know a lot of people are gonna go screaming assault. You know what, no, it's, it's assaultive to trap me in an elevator and start screaming at me at the top of your lungs for five minutes straight. That's just insane. So it's a real double standard. I don't know, maybe because she was emotional and a woman makes it okay, but I just really found it distasteful. Um, let's go to the high school or college drinking buddy and everything he said. It's so interesting. He never says he saw Kavanaugh blackout. And Kavanaugh was honest in on when he was speaking to the Senate, when the Senate committee, when he said, I drank beer, I like beer, sometimes I drank too much, but I never blacked out. He literally said those words. I mean, if I felt like editing, I would do the playback for you, but trust me when he said these words. This man never says that he 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 blacked out. He just says he knows he drank in excess and then and then calls him a liar. He never, I mean, unless you guys have seen something I haven't, but I saw his little press conference. You know, so I I don't know. And, and and then there's a whole thing where he's throwing ice at people. Look, throwing ice and, and having a sex trafficking ring where you drug and gang rape women. So those are two very far things. And in the police report, it never said, it never said that he was drunk. Not from what I've heard of the police report. It just said he threw ice at somebody. And so this is when you know people are grasping at straws. They're really grasping at straws and just looking for something, anything that they can be upset about, that they can be in an uproar about because they don't really have what they want. So now they're like, oh, well, you know, we can't make the raping stick. We can't make the sexual assault stick. So let's try to make all this other stuff stick. Let's, let's just basically spin this any way we can um, so that, uh, you know, we cannot have this man be confirmed. And and I just want to touch on just one last thing. And then I'm done with this video. Um, I actually heard Democracy Now!, one of my favorite when I'm doing research news agencies, um, they're much more propagandized than they used to be. Um, but I, I remember like back in my college years, um, loving to listen to NPR um, when I would drive and um, and I've seen Democracy Now! like here and there. You guys know I've never been big on television and I don't think Democracy Now! came on TV. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure, but I know that like back in the day, I definitely, I definitely encountered Democracy Now! So um, somebody literally came on there and said, do we even want somebody on the Supreme Court that's my three-year-old singing. Wait, hold on. <laughs> that was so cute. Okay, anyway. So um, she said, do we really want somebody on the Supreme Court that has these kind of accusations even made about them? And my heart just fell a little. I thought to myself, is this what we're coming to? So we know we can't prove anything, but the argument is, if I'll say something bad enough about a person, that's not a person we want. So we can basically veto anybody we don't like and keep them out of the Supreme Court simply by making outrageous accusations. I mean, that's kind of what this is coming to. Um, a little problematic, a little bit of an issue with this. Not really thrilled with how all of this is going. Um, I just think that people hate our president so much. People hate 
family values. I know that the, the males who go their own way, they think this is all like, you know, helping them. No, a lot of these people are married. Kavanaugh's married. Um, our president is married. They don't hate women. Um, but there are a lot of divisions being drawn in this country and there's an attack on the family structure. I'm going to do a whole video on this, so I won't go into it here, but it feels like anybody who is a traditionalist, anybody, which Kavanaugh is, which our president is, um, anybody who is manly, anybody who believes in proper gender roles, anybody who is healthy minded is under attack. Um, they just will not stand for things to go along as they should. They want there to be dysfunction. They, they want a problem to be had between the sexes, between the so-called races, between the rich and the poor. Uh, you guys know I'm not for the ultra rich. Um, I definitely think that's problematic. But, you know, there's a lot of lines being drawn in the sand. And it's concerning. It's, it's concerning. And I think those of us with more level heads, those of us with more traditional values, we really have to stand up to this foolishness. We really have to speak louder. These people are emotional. They are belligerent. You know, unstable people, that's how they act. They are belligerent. They're emotional. They, they come with, you know, vulgar attacks. They do things like trap you in elevators and scream at you at the top of your lungs, at the top of their lungs. So all of these things are problematic to me. I, you know, like I said, I was doing my research to see if there was anything new and there wasn't anything new per se, but all of these things really stuck out to me as I watched the two news clips that I was watching just to see what the pulse of things were. Um, and they won't be happy. They won't be happy till they destroy this country. And that's evident. Anybody who wants to do the right thing, anybody who is sane-minded, anybody who's not a part of their twisted, feminist, homosexual agenda is a problem. You know, anybody who's not for abortion is a problem. Anybody who dares to actually act like their own sex is a problem. You know, all of this is a problem. Normal anger is a problem. You know, there are double standards left and right. It's, it's a big mess. And I feel like a lot of us aren't speaking out loud enough against this. And so all of the people who are getting the press, all of the people who are making the most noise are the most foolish people in the room. And so what are we going to do about that is the question. I'll talk to you guys later.